it has been a crazy couple of weeks. I have recently learned that I just can't teach one skill per video because <laughs> I just, I do everything all at once. So what I'm going to do is kind of change my format just a little bit and just give you guys the basics. Next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to make ginger clay, Tylos glue, royal icing, and isomalt. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own isomalt. Not from nibs, but from actual isomalt crystals. Woohoo! <laughs> Exciting, huh? <laughs> this is what I use. The, what is it? Modernist Pantry Kitchen Alchemy, I don't know. This is isomalt down here. A lot of their packages look alike, so make sure that you, you, uh, this is isomalt down there. So from those crystals, I'm going to make my own nibs. From those nibs, I am going to color some isomalt to go right into my grid here. There's, there it is right there. It's black. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm also going to make clear isomalt. I'm not going to show you how to paint on it because I forgot to tape it. <laughs> but I am going to show you, this is the best part, not painting on your isomalt but actually creating a transfer on your isomalt. This is my absolutely most favorite thing to do. Frustrating, yes, but really cool results. I'm going to be using Simi Cakes isomalt transfers to create the, the front window of the cafe, the, the, the central perk. Too exciting. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. My, um, my uh, water, my ice water in the, um, in the sink already, and I have my mold ready as well, and I think this might be too much, <laughs> but we're going to see. <laughs> if, if it is too much, I have other molds I can pour this into, it's no big deal. So I just pour this in. Some people like to put water in it. I don't. Um, if you do put water in it, um, you're going to need to boil it all the way out and you need to use filtered water so it doesn't um, it hurt the, it doesn't hurt the um, clarity of the ice malt. I just put it um, on high <laughs> and we wait. I'm going to put a thermometer on it. Um, make sure your thermometer is not hitting the bottom of the pan. I'm going to boil it to crack, which is 320 degrees. Okay, we're at 320. I'm going to take this off the heat off, and then I'm going to um, put it in an ice bath. To, to stop it cooking. I leave it there for just a few seconds here but you definitely need to stop the cooking process. Now we want to pour it into our mold. Um, any mold that um, can handle the heat of uh, um, 320 degrees will do. I have, I can't find, I, use, I usually use ice cube molds, but I can't seem to find them <laughs> right now. But it's a silicone mold, any silicone mold at, that, that can handle the, the, um, the heat of 320 degrees. Now we just let them cool. Ice molds all cooled. So what I'm going to do is pop them out and I'm going to stick them in a Ziploc bag. Let's see how um, they're pretty clear. I'm pretty, ha I'm pretty happy with them. Um, usually when you, when you cook them too long, 
they tend to get yellow. So that shocking with the ice water really, really helps. And then now, all you, you have to really protect your, um, have to really protect your isomalt. Um, when I have this much isomalt in my bag, I will put a food safe silicone um, packet, not silicone, but silica, silica packet in with it so that it'll absorb any um, humidity that's going to be coming my way in the next, well, probably month because, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's March and we're already starting to warm up. Ouch. Be very, very careful. The shards are sharp. This is kind of like glass in a way, so um, they can cut you. Okay, we have them all bagged up, and now, now when we're ready to use the isomalt, we will just take out a couple of nibs of isomalt, put them in the microwave for 30 seconds or a little more, melt them, and then pour. Okay, so I need to pour a black window, so I'm going to show you guys how to color isomalt. I use um, a silicone, um, whatever you call these things, <laughs> cup, but you don't have to. It's just easier to clean out. Um, I'm taking two nibs of, uh, of isomalt that I made. This, I, I think I overcooked these. They're a little yellow. They're from a previous version, not the ones I cooked today. But I'm taking two, two nibs of isomalt, nibs I guess, and I'm putting them in the microwave first for 30 seconds. Okay. I take them out and I look at them, and um, as you can see, they're not all the way melted. So I'm going to put them in in 15 minute increments until they are melted. Okay, it's kind of. Um, bubbling and I'm gonna wait till it kind of cools a bit. You don't want it to cool too much though because then it's you're gonna be back to a solid state, right? So um, I'm gonna put my woo isn't this fun? You feel like a mad scientist sometimes. Don't touch it when it's like this. <laughs> okay. I think I put too much in. Let's take a look. I'm not going to ruin my, my building. So I'm going to pull this over here. Take a look at what I've got before I pour it in the building. Let's let that dry for a minute, cool for a minute, I should say. It looks pretty good. Never, never, never touch isomalt with your bare hands. This is 300 degrees. You, and it sticks to your skin. So if you get isomalt on your hands, immediately run, get sink. In fact, if you're not near a sink, I would have a bucket of ice water near you at all times when you're working with isomalt. Because if it sticks, you can't get it off. It sticks to your hands. You can't get it off your hands, and it's burning you. So I've had, I've had a burn or two, and it does not feel good. They make gloves for isomalt. If you need to work with them that way, I have them, but I can't. You know, like really move in them, so I don't. But the, I don't use isomalt. I don't sculpt isomalt. I don't do anything like that with it. I just pour it. Okay, I think it's the color I want. So um, I'm gonna put it back in the thing. I was just testing it. I don't do that all the time. I didn't want to to make a mistake my first pour of the year. Believe me, I make plenty of mistakes, but <laughs> I didn't want to make it for my first pour, isn't it? weird looking. So I'm going to put it in for another, I'm going to try 10 seconds this time. Um, I don't want to boil it, that's for sure. Okay, 
So now I've got it back to its liquid state. You definitely, when you're pouring windows, you definitely need a mat, a silicone mat underneath it. No ifs, ands, buts about it. You need a silicone mat underneath it. Now when I pour a window, I don't want, you see there's, there's bubbles, there's bubbles in here. So I kind of wait for the bubbles to cool down or I kind of pop them myself. You can um, put these things in the oven and keep them hot. And I have done that, but I'm not sure what it would do with the food coloring. I really don't. If it would distort, if it hurt the, the heat would hurt the food coloring, who knows? But here you go. So what I do is I, if you're using a glass pitcher, well then you can ignore this part, but what I do is I just pinch this and I try to uh, just, I just pour it in. Now I want to bring it to the top, but I don't want it over the top. So take my trusty toothpick here, and it and and make sure it's all the. The quarters are even with the the sides. For some reason, it just doesn't. I'm sure there's a physics reason or something, but for some reason, it doesn't do that. Now, if you make a mistake, there's you can always torch it. If it doesn't come out smooth or you have bubbles, you can get a torch. If I keep messing with this, I'm going to have a problem. I gotta get that corner. This is where the lattice work is gonna go. So let it sit there until it cools. For and it, it'll sit it'll sit here for about oh twenty minutes or so until it's absolutely cooled and dried. Um, before we do anything with isomalt, you need to protect it from moisture. So the Belleville Gingerbread Walk, the one that I'm submitting this project to, um, encourages the use of lacquer um, to protect the gingerbread pieces when they're in the windows of you know Belleville, Illinois. But um, so what I do when I'm doing things for Belleville, I'll spray the windows, I'll, I'll save money on the, the glaze spray and I'll just spray the windows with lacquer and it protects them. So either way, I mean, um, whatever. But since, you know, my audience today is probably, <laughs> you're, you're, if your um, project isn't going to a, um, a contest that has, that, ha that allows lacquer, this is what I use it is the oh, <laughs> the PME uh, PME glaze spray and um, it's clear edible and what I do is I when I when I have clear windows I will I will um, spray both sides of the windows this I think I still will because I want to protect the shine when isomalt gets in contact with humidity it gets icky it's like um and that's a technical term i know but it's um it's really it gets it it gets um really foggy and that's a nice way of saying it and there's no way to fix it once it's in your piece i've had to bake pieces again just to get the windows out so i could um because the windows have gone foggy on me. So you spray the windows, you never wait, a, a, never wait overnight to spray a window. You wait till it's completely dry, you know, cool, completely cool. This has been sitting for like an hour. <clears throat> but you wait till it's completely cool. You don't want it when it's hot. But if you if you let it sit overnight, any humidity that's in the air any wetness in the air will gravitate towards this thing and it's over. So you can't let it, you can't let it sit 
overnight either. So I'm going to tip it, just tip it a little bit and just spray. Ooh. Ah, my spray's a little clogged. This, when the spray gets clogged, I dip it in hot water and it, it works just fine. But, okay, so it, this, this side is, um, while this side's drying, I am going to clean my nozzle. Okay, this is almost dry. It usually takes five minutes to dry. I'm going to tip it over. Because of the bricks, the isomalt won't touch the mat, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, and I'm going to spray the other side. I do a very good job of... There we go. Now let it sit. We're going to let that sit for another five minutes. Okay, now that everything is dry, um, I'm going to put on uh, my, uh, my sugar veil... Um, lattice work. Here goes nothing. So I'm just getting a little bit of Tylos on my um, my brush and I'm going to brush this. You don't want to brush the isomalt. Um, I just think it would fog it. it. It wouldn't fog it up because I protected it but I don't want it to smear. Um, it does it does leave. The Tylos glue does leave a residue. You'll you'll be able to see like the little swishy marks. If I were to have you know painted all that, you'd have seen it. So I like to keep it on here, and this will maybe help it loosen up a bit because the tylos is is wet. So let's do it. I've got one shot at this. Cue the dramatic music. Okay, I have my isomalt uh, poured. Now I'm just going to put my transfers in that I want. Um, sort of trying to center this a little bit. Let's see here. I've got everything lined up the way I want it. I don't think the these green lines are going to come out. Um, they're they're just too pale. Most important part is the central perk, but I do want the windows all to be fogged up because I don't want to you know be able to look in the building. So that's why I'm doing the rest, and I want everything to look like it's one big you know window and not just central perk in the middle with a bunch of fog and and everything else be clear it just would look weird so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in the oven at 300 degrees for about five to seven minutes um, I did some smaller smaller glass work and that's about how long it took this might take a little longer because there's more there's more isomalt in this be, be sure when you're picking it up that you don't move anything, um, move any of the transfers around, and let's see what happens. Okay, it seems, it's been out of the oven for quite some time. It's, 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 I still feel a little bit of warmth, but it's, it's the, the isomalt has cooled. So let's take it off and see what we got. Hoping it's okay. Here, where's my ah the plastic? Oh, 
Okay. Pretty freaking cool, huh? <laughs> we have um, you can you don't you can't see through it. That's what I wanted for these windows, and then you get the central perk in the middle there, and that's exactly what I want. Once I can feel no more warmth coming from the windows at all, I'm going to spray both sides of the window with edible glaze to protect it from humidity. But did I not tell you? Too cool for words. <laughs> I'm so tickled. I, yeah, there's some spotting here that I'm not really crazy about, but really once it goes dark, you're not going to see any of that. Um, so, so I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. In the next video, we're going to learn how to panel this bad boy with ginger clay. Till next time.